Welcome back to What Are Tea Noobs for General Disturbance. This is a Rhine Metal Borsig Waffenträger. It's a tier 8 German tank destroyer. It's located on the north spawn of Cliff and it's under the command of Giddy Liddy of Reborn. Now, it's basically a turreted tank destroyer, but it's the first of the Waffenträger, the support weapons. And it's got a very big gun. Now, which one has she got? The 128? Or the 150. Oh, she's got the 15 centimeter. It's the big gun. It does huge damage. 750 alpha, but it's got a very slow reload rate. Now the other one's got a fast fire rate, but slightly less damage. Reload time is 17.26 seconds. So Giddy Liddy's taking it off for a little uh, jaunt down to this bush in this corner, and she's taking aim at the enemy. And an E50 was spotted. Oh, she tracked him. She tracked him, pulls back into cover straight away. This thing's got no armor at all. It's basically uh, a spe specially designed hull using the HETS uh, suspension system. Okay, she's reloaded. She's getting ready for her next shot. But it's uh, a specially designed uh, hull that will carry the gun. A very big gun. It's not very fast, only 35 kilometers an hour forward speed, 12 back, uh, but it does have very high alpha on the gun. And the Germans realized that they could use a support vehicle like this, which had incredibly good camo. And this thing does have very good camo qualities because it's very low. It could hide behind the hedges. The enemy would never see it. The commander would be sitting there using binoculars and whatever else uh, he needed to, to find the enemy target. He'd line the guys up and they'd hit it with such an enormous shell that the enemy would be wiped out with one shot. Now, thankfully, most of these Waffenträger never actually got built. If they had been used, then it would have been very deadly for the Soviets and for the Allies. Okay, we've got a Jaeger there. And, oh, you see that round ricochet off! And you saw it fly off to the left after it hit the side of the uh, Jaegeru. Amazing. You don't often see that. Not when it careens off at that angle. Okay, reloaded. Pulling back into position. Usually I'd say find a new position to fire from. Once you've actually been fired and you missed, normally the enemy... Well, he's, that Jaeger is coming on. He stopped to take a shot. Or is he still moving? He's still moving. Okay, well, there's a, a wall in the way there, but she can get through if she goes just to slightly to one side of the gun. That's about right. She's almost loaded. She's going for the heat, and it works. 623 hit points, but she definitely was seen there. So she has to pull back. And she's seeking the cover of the building because the enemy does have three RT. And you can be certain the enemy RT will try to hit a Borsig because they know full well that a Borsig has very low armor. Well, the Jaeger was killed. He was finally wiped out by our GW Tiger P. But Giddy Liddy's doing the right thing. She's staying behind cover. There's some enemy on the lower plateau, or rather what I call that area, just up from the Western Pass. There's a Progetto 65 on the other side and an ISM who's in the dip. And she's moving forward to try and find a target. It's a bit wide, this vehicle, as well. And if you're up against a brick wall like that, it can be a bit difficult to handle. It gets stuck. And if you reverse too fast, you might actually go up the side of the wall because it's very, very light, this vehicle. Although it's carrying a huge, heavy gun, the 15 centimeter gun, which is basically, it's an, an artillery gun that's been redesigned for anti-tank use. There's an Oho there. And, well, we're getting a partial outline, which means he's behind the rocks. And that's the only part of him we can actually see. She fires around him, but she does hit him, but it just doesn't go through, so she must have hit a hard point on him. And we just lost our 53 TP to their RT, the 212A. 
As I said earlier, they've got three RT, an M40, M43, a 2128 and an Object 261. So Giddy Liddy does need to be aware that if she does get seen, she needs to get in cover quick because any of those three RT could do some serious damage if they got around near her. You see Al Yeager trying to cross the Western Pass and he got stopped and he's been tracked and he's been hit by one of those enemy RTs. And he's being pecked to death by them, unfortunately. Looks like he's going to go down. He made a huge mistake. Yeah, you don't cross the Western Pass with impunity. He should have come around where he was absolutely uh, safe. And then tried to squeeze around the corner quickly. But he didn't. And as a consequence, he's paid for it. And the IS-3 now is having a bit of a problem. He's sitting on the corner. But here comes a 53 TP. And I think that Giddy Liddy can do a lot of damage to this 53 TP. He popped up to the corner. Pulled back again. After our IS-3 pulled back. I think the IS-3 was trying to tempt him to come around the corner. Here comes the 53 TP again. This could be awkward for him. Giddy Liddy's got him. <laughs> that was a good one. She was seen though, so she needs to get behind cover. Enemy Artie's not going to take that lying down. You can be sure of that. Yeah, there's the enemy Artie. Object 261 landed around nearby. You can see where it landed. Front left hand side. Huge amount of damage. 356 hit points of damage. Ouch. Yep, you only need to land around near a Ryan Metal Borsig Waffentrager to actually do some damage to them. They are very vulnerable to RT. Virtually no armor whatsoever on this vehicle, but Giddy Liddy's decided to do the smart thing, which is to actually pull back a bit, use these bushes. And she's gone forward again to look through these bushes here. Now, there's no enemy in the Western Pass area as far as we can see. We're only one tank up on the enemy. They've still got three RT and four other vehicles. A medium tank and three tank destroyers. So there's bound to be at least one tank destroyer guarding the Western Pass. There's likely to be a tank destroyer up in the nest at uh, K5. And we know there's an SU-130PM near the hill. That would tend to indicate, as we know where the Pajetto is as well, he's their only medium tank. So that would indicate that there's only one RT, uh, there's one, only one tank destroyer guarding this pass. Only one. And more than likely, all three RTs are going to be in grid squares K1, K2, or K3, maybe K4. So they're going to be guarding their cap. There's the, uh, that's the tank destroyer guarding the pass. It's the Striv 1030 and he's in trouble. He's been spotted. He spotted the IS-3. Giddy Liddy's moving out to try and get a shot. She needs to get past the rock. That should be enough. Dial in. Oh, she left it a little too late. We lost the IS-3, but we've still got that Striv in sight. He's moving into that gap. If he moves around that corner, she's got him. Oh, she was seen. Giddy Liddy was seen. She's pulling back, but yep, she got him. She must have been seen at some point or other. The sixth sense didn't go off. Maybe what she was seen was there was some distraction going on when she knocked a fence down and the RT spotted that and decided to land around on her. 319 hit points from a near miss. If it had been a direct hit, she would have known about it. She would have been out the game straight away. Well, she's loaded. And the enemy is now down to two tank destroyers and three arties. Now, more than likely, there's somebody going to be in the nest at K5, which is why our guys are having trouble. The SU-130PM is up near the hill. Progetto's just going in to have a look at him. And our Object 430 coming in from the other direction. That means it's very unlikely there's any tank destroyer guarding this western pass so we could move forward at this point there's the SU-130PM 
I reckon that Giddy Liddy can take a chance and move forward. I don't think there's anybody guarding to her south. But she's pulling back. She's still uncertain. Okay, the SU-130 PM has dealt with the Object 430. Okay, both her first aid kit and her repair kit have come off cooldown. But I honestly do not feel... There's their SU-130 PM. He's being engaged by two tanks. Progetto and the Striv 1030 and Orati all going after him. And he's receiving fire. Giddy Liddy is watching to see where he's gonna, what's going to happen next. He's gone. Okay, that means they've only got one tank destroyer left now. More than likely in the nest. If she gets fired upon while she's crossing here, then obviously he's he's not got in the nest. He's actually guarding this pass. But she wasn't seen. No sixth sense went off. She's moving. The moment sixth sense goes off, she needs to dive into cover. Keeping a gun ready. She had it didn't go off. I think the I'm pretty sure that tank destroyer is in the nest. He's okay. Yes, he is there. There he is. SU ISU152 was in the nest. Now I don't see these replays before I play them, so I am using my tactical skill to try and work out where the enemy's likely to be. And they found the ISU152. They haven't wiped him out yet. He's up there. He's spotted. She can hit him. Oh, she fires in the general direction, but doesn't get a hit. Now, I think she's going to try and go around that corner and see if she can get another hit on him. He might see her, though. She spotted the 2 on 2A. Okay, she can take him out straight off. And the SU ICU 152 gets killed by the RT. T92 HMC gets him. So the 2 on 2A now is vulnerable. Giddy Liddy styling in. Yes, beautiful shot. Absolutely perfect. And that means there's only two arties left. One of them's been spotted. It's the Object 261. You're spotted by the Progetto just as he was uh, passing. No, you don't go away. You are ours. Oh, and she didn't get that one right. She didn't give enough lead on the shot. Progetto's low on hit points, but he's found the other one. The M40, M43. And, well, giddy liddy. No, go for the M40, M43. Well, the problem now is that Giddy Liddy is the only tank destroyer left on the team. And the T92 HMC is coming down to help. She's running short on time. I would have actually gone down by the Western Pass. Gone in and taken out the M40, M43. But I think Giddy Liddy actually may be doing the right thing. Because we knew the Object 261 was headed towards the, the hill rise. He might be trying to come up and go around the, the hill to get to our camp. Taking the long route. It's past the time that he can cap on his own, so that's not going to happen. We've had the two-minute warning. We might be about to spot the Object 261. Now, he's got a, a view range of about 300 meters. He's a tier 10 RT. They have tend to have view ranges above 300 meters. The tier lower, or than that, is a 260. And there's the object 261. And that was the one minute hooter. But she was seen. And that means the enemy RT is going to be dialing in. So she needs to get this shot in now, quick. Get it right. Yep, that's it. Now get into cover because the M40, M43 is going to be shooting in this direction direction very shortly oh and he was killed by uh, our teammates 
So it's all over. Let's have a look at the end of battle stats. It's the first class tanker for Gilly Liddy in the Rhine Metal Borsig Waffen Tragan. It's the first time she's had a first class tanker in this uh, uh, vehicle. She also picked up a fire for effect for doing more damage than the hit points of her own vehicle, a fight advantage for getting at least four kills, she got four, and a bruiser medal for getting at least five critical hits, she got five exactly. And because she killed two arties, she got the Pascucci's medal as well. Yes, she killed both the uh, 212A and the Object 261, and that earned her an epic medal. Her win eight for the game was 3,765. Very nice. Let's have a look at team score. Didn't get the highest damage in the game. No, nope, that went to the uh, T92 HMC uh, of, uh, is that, um, is it Al Aki Evelyn? Aki Evelyn? Yes, um, managed to get a Gorse medal and a high caliber and a win eight of 5572. Well done to him or her. 4,413 hit points of damage. 3203 goes to the Progetto 65. And 2732 goes to the M53, M55, who got a Confederate. Giddy Liddy got 2584. And of course, that Pescucci's. And of course, we shouldn't forget the uh, guys on the enemy team who did well there. Progetto 65 did 4,240 hit points. He was just behind our RT, our T92. And their 212A did 2,600. And 64, slightly more than Giddy Liddy, but of course he did get wiped out. And the Shiv 1030, he got 2650 and got a tank sniper during that game as well. When it came to kills, though, it was a share between Aki Evelyn and Giddy Liddy. Both had four kills apiece. Then we got the Pajetto 65 on our team and the one on the enemy team with three kills apiece. And when it came to base XP, it was Giddy Liddy because, of course, she was tier 8 in a tier 10 game. And she earned 1,139 base experience points. 954 went to the T92 and 877 to the M53, M55. She fired 11 rounds in that game, got 8 direct hits and 5 penetrations. Damage of 2,584 hit points, of which 470, 460 rather, were at more than 300 meters. She... Received two hits by way of splash damage from the enemy, enemy arty. Yes, they managed to work out where she was. They saw the saw her the first time when she took out one of the enemy tanks. Uh, they also um, probably actually fired at uh, the damage she was doing on the ground. They must have worked out where she was because I didn't see the six cents go off. So I don't think she was seen when she went out um, to try and kill the strip 1030. Uh, she spotted three enemy vehicles, damaged six in the enemy, killed four, and did 846 hit points of damage assistance. On a premium count, she earned 44,141 credits, and after repair, ammunition, resupply, and consumables, and it's consumables that cost her actually in this game, she actually ended up with a loss of 25,275 credits. She picked up one bomb for getting the Pescucci. And 1,708 XP times 2 for the first victory, 3,418 for completing a mission and events, took away 6,835 experience points altogether. So yes, she did very well. You didn't kill all the RT in the game. There was um, two RT. You did kill uh, two of them. Not all the RT in the game. There was that M40, M43. And uh, I, would, I would have said, actually, the moment the M40, M43 became visible, it would have been easier to actually just train your shot on that position. You knew exactly where he was. And, of course, he wasn't... He was going to go unsighted very quickly as soon as the uh, Progetto 65 had been killed. But uh, that would have been a certain kill. And then you could go after the Object C61 afterwards. But you did make the right choice to actually go around to uh, find the Object 261 the other way. In fact, if I'd been in the Object 261, I would have driven straight up the hill and away, as far away as I could to try and ensure a draw because the clock was ticking down. And if they couldn't find me, they couldn't kill me, then they couldn't get the they couldn't get a cap out. So, yes, that would have been my choice, actually, if I was been the Object 261. And Giddy Liddy's decision to go round the way she did actually prevented him from doing that. So uh, it was a good choice. So if you enjoyed that replay, please give this video a like and do subscribe to our channel. 
hit that notification button, the bell, so that you get alerted as soon as we put a new video up. We try to put as many as we can up every day. We get sent a lot of replays, so if you do send me a replay, don't uh, expect it immediately. We don't. We try to get them out as quickly as we can, but we have a huge backlog. There's over one and a half thousand videos still waiting, or replays rather, waiting to be turned into video. And so uh, we try to get through as many as we can, as quickly as we can, but we can't guarantee that it'll be done immediately. It may be weeks, it may be months before you see your replay, but we will try to get around to it as quickly as we can. Thanks for watching.